Yo, what up guys, it's your boy Williams Fitness back again with another video and we've got Terence Ruffin on, the absolute iconic legend of classic physique. Oh yeah, 100% brother, come on, your posing <laughs> cannot be touched. It cannot be touched. Oh, <laughs> so, a um, bit, little bit of a background on Terence. Obviously, you were the youngest person in 2014 to get a pro card, is that right? Yeah. yeah. You've won the Tampa Pro, you've won the uh, Kentucky Pro. Um, and you've got a bit of a background in the military also that I'd like yeah. to touch on at some point today. So to, to start off, let's go back to a very young Terence. So growing up, were you like into any you know, particular sports? Um, where did you know, your, your youth go into bodybuilding, so to speak, with regards to lifting and stuff? Okay. Well, um, I didn't know anything about bodybuilding until I was uh, about 18 years old. But before then... Um, I did lots of sports. I did. I played, um, I guess, soccer and um, gymnastics when I was real young, like, you know, before I hit puberty. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> that's a weird way to say it, but yeah. Um, and then from that point, I did, uh, I did kickboxing and football you know, when I was like 13, like 12 to 14. And then um, I moved to a really small town and then uh, they only had football there, like American football. So. Yeah, that's what I did in uh, high school. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, my foot. But yeah, yeah. Did you did you ask me um, <laughs> how I get into bodybuilding? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of like sort of a segue from what sort of sports you did as a kid, because a lot of people are quite interested in, you know, how people go from um, sports in high school, so to speak, to to bodybuilding. Normally, like you say, with um, American football, especially in in the states, guys start lifting and just to get bigger and stronger and faster. And sort of that's yeah. a segued quite a few guys into bodybuilding. Was that sort of the case for you or was it a completely different? Angle? No, no. You know, I did enjoy lifting uh, while I played football, but no, I didn't think like I, I still had no idea. I didn't get into uh, bodybuilding until after I joined the Air Force. And uh, basically I was going in for like a special forces job and, you know, I, I made it pretty far, but um, at the end of the day, I didn't end up um, completing it. And uh, while I was waiting for them to give me a different job, there was a gym literally across the street. I mean, this old condemned apartment complex. And uh, I started training there and, and uh, I liked it. And um, when I, once I got to the new job, uh, I met these guys. I was like, yeah, you, there's this thing called bodybuilding. You should look into it. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And then uh, that's how I kind of found out about it. So how old were you then roughly? I was 18 years old, 18. Wow, and that's when you pretty much started your bodybuilding career almost. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much, yeah. At 18. So what sort of size were you looking at back then? All right, so um, in high school, I was like maybe 115, 120 pounds. Uh, from there, um, people always get my height confused. Like, they think I'm like really tall, but I'm honest, I'm like 5'5". Five, five. I'm not really that tall. But uh, especially every every single time I put a post on Instagram and I put my my weight, they say, "How tall are you? How tall are you?" Because like, <laughs> they think I'm like I don't know. They think I'm like five ten or something. I'm like, nah, it's the know. angle to the camera, isn't it? If you shoot from down yeah. upwards. <laughs> you know, my first coach too. He was like, "Dude," he, he said, "You're short, but you don't have like short guy proportions." And I'm like, "Well, that's cool." <laughs> so I was like, "Oh yeah, that works out." Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like. Um, I don't, even, I don't even know where I was going. <laughs> so we were on about how big you were at 18. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so I was um, really like then. And then once I joined the military, um, you know, it's funny. A lot of people lose weight when they join because they're the, the amount of stress and then they're, they're moving around all day. And you only eat three times a day and you get maybe 10 minutes to eat it. I actually gained like five pounds. I was, I was like, oh, well, you know. I, I, I wasn't starving. I wasn't starving when I was a kid. Like my mom. That says to me, you were lazy in the military. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So like you know, I gained some weight then, and then um, after that, uh, once I got out of special forces uh, training, that's when I started putting on a lot more muscle. I was probably 120, 125 then, and I got up to um, about six months. I got up to like 150, 155. Yeah. Wow. So that's when I, and yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, didn't really do like, and the funny thing is people always ask me what I need to do, how I do what I do. You know, they want like, they, before they get started with bodybuilding, they want everything to be perfect. But honestly, I just got started. I, 
um, while I was in, they didn't give us a lot of money because, you know, we lived on base, so they took money out for that. They they had a uh, chow hall, so they took money out for that, so we couldn't afford food. So basically, I would eat whatever they had there for breakfast, and then I would take a meal with me to go, you know, and then I eat that, then I come back for lunch and do the same thing, the same thing for dinner. And um, I would just eat as much as possible, and um, I would just train, and then like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> you know, obviously, especially as for a new person, as long as you're eating a lot and training hard, like anything is gonna help you grow, you know, yeah. when you're new. It's like when you're intermediate or advanced is when you have to start to kind of think a little bit more about things, but yeah. Okay, so how long were you in the military for then? How long did that period of your life last? Uh, six years. So um, my whole bodybuilding career started while I was serving. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So just a bit of a, a side topic from that then, because obviously Cedric is still in the military. Do you sort of like, can you sort of understand his situation better than most then, especially when it comes yeah, to... Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I think he plays it up a little bit because he's in the, like, he's in the reserve. He's not active duty. So like I was active duty this full time, every day, full time. He's like in the reserves of the National Guard. So it's really like one weekend a month, um, two weeks um, at a certain point in the year. But with him, he can choose to do you can't, there are opportunities to do it like full time to make some extra money. Yeah. But like, that's pretty, it's pretty like most of the time is up to his schedule. So I'm like, well, you know, he talks about like, oh, the military. I'm like, yeah, it's not the same as like when I, when, uh, you know, I served there, even David Henry, if anyone knows David Henry, he was active duty and he was a 202 champ when he was active duty. So, um, and he's been top five at the 212, like for almost, you know, for years. So it's a little different, but, you know, I don't know. Okay, okay. So basically, he's just doing it part-time. It's a, exactly part-time. Yeah, part-time. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. So is there anything that you learned in the military that you've applied to bodybuilding? Um, you know, honestly, that time when I was trying out for Special Forces and played a big role, it was awful and it was difficult. And I've never done anything harder than that. So and I'll tell people that, like, off the bat, like, bodybuilding is pretty easy compared to stuff like that and like I didn't even finish training so I just can only imagine what people who actually made it and they actually go overseas and they do that job actually do I'm like it's really like it's really not that bad just I think a lot of times it's perspective like when people people either people who've been through like a hard time growing up or a hard situation it puts a lot of things in perspective especially when you're choosing to do something yeah um, and on top of that I mean like the discipline um, that was brought on from that, from um, sports, you know, from my upbringing also really, really helped out with um, staying on track with bodybuilding. So when you refer back to your upbringing, do you have like quite a normal household? I mean, you've got brothers and sisters. Um, I was the only child. I have a, a half brother, uh, but he grew up with his mom. But I know him. I talked to him. He he actually just joined the Air Force about, uh, about four or five months ago, which is pretty cool. Oh, He's wow. also younger than me. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I always ask him. He does. He's not really in the bodybuilding too much. He's in good shape, but you know, he's just kind of living his life. Um, but my upbringing was it was just me and my mom pretty much most of the time. Um, you know, uh, during certain parts uh, when I got older, we started taking care of my grandmother, so she she came into the picture. But um, my mom was pretty pretty uh, like a strict parent. Like I couldn't really go out to parties. Uh, Doing, I could I had a curfew, uh, just lots of rules, lots of rules, yeah. Do you think that was because, like, was she a, a single mom then? Is, do you think she was? Yes, she was definitely a single mom, yeah, oh, yeah. So she was playing both sides, like playing mom and dad sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it was definitely, yeah, all the time. And then, but, you know, even diet-wise, like, um, I mean, like, I mean, she didn't, like, it wasn't bodybuilding diet, but, like, she didn't really like sodas in the house um she cooked pretty healthy meals for me like i like a lot of times grilled chicken or maybe some pasta you know it was always something like a structured um healthy balanced meal you know so you know all that stuff has been yeah i've been eating like eggs and and like some type not oatmeal but like grits or cream of rice in the morning for it since i've been born so this is it isn't really too di too much difference you know it's just been prepping you from the day you came. <laughs> you just subconsciously <laughs> knew it, you know? It's like, you're going to be a bodybuilder? I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, so it's really, honestly, it's really, it's really not that bad for me. 
the hardest part um, diet wise for me when I first got started was um, after the shows, not going crazy. That's literally the only part. But getting ready for the show is it's really um, it's really pretty easy because in my mind I'm like, well, I don't want to look like shit on stage, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> that's like a biggest fear of mine is not looking good on stage, you know. A lot of people say that, especially with the diet. I had um, Patrick Moore on the other day. And he was saying he finds the diet process easier because yeah. he hasn't got to eat as much. But when he's trying to put size on, it's so much harder to get the, get the meals in. You know, I actually, <laughs> I was just, um, his, uh, his, his, um, his friend, uh, Hunter, I know Hunter Labrada, he just came down to Tampa to uh, do some training with my coach. And yeah, Hunter, yeah, Patrick is just a specimen, man. He doesn't eat a lot. Of, he eats le- He probably eats around the same amount as me, um, which is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, he's got a lot of rooms, so like he has all that um, that room to like get better. You know, I mean, the grow since he's not like capping out food or or training or supplements or anything like that. So it's a really cool case with him. You know, still holding down a full time job as well, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. So, <laughs> <laughs> back, back to you anyway. Um, so, uh, when was it you made your Olympia debut? Was it 20, not 2016, was it? Uh, 2016, yeah. 2016, yeah, yeah. How did that feel for you going from like Tampa to, 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 to obviously that show? It was cool. So, like, it all kind of happened um, somewhat quickly. You know, if people don't know, uh, I turned pro in 2014 before Classic was a thing. And so at that point, it was only 212. And uh, I took 2015 off to try to gain some size for that, but I didn't really gain all that much, to be honest with you. Um, uh, Then at the end of that year, they announced Classic. So I was like, okay, let me try this out since I'm nowhere near big enough for the 212. And the first show I did was the Prestige Crystal Cup. Um, Breon Ansley and Darren Charles were there. Uh, both of those guys, they placed height ahead of me. Uh, I got third, which honestly, like it was, it was really, that was probably the most nerve wracking thing. Like I, I hadn't competed in over a year. I'm doing this, this new class. I'm doing this against guys that weigh like 50, you know, pounds more than me, you know, a foot taller than me. I'm like, how's this going to go? <laughs> you know? And, um, you know, I get on stage and, you know, I'm in the first call out. So I'm like, oh, okay, this, I'm happy. And then like, I'm in the top three and I'm like, oh shoot, like, this is really cool, you know? And um, so that, that actually like, that actually calmed my nerves and like, it was okay, okay. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I do have a place here in this new division. And uh, the following week was the Tampa Pro. Yeah. Um, I went up against Darren again and, and I ended up beating him at that show. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty awesome because if, I know a lot of guys don't follow the history of bodybuilding, but Darren was a, 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 an Olympian champ, you know, not champ, but he was a, a you know, uh, an Olympian. He competed with like Ronnie Coleman and these guys in the open. And, um, you know, that was an awesome feeling. And, uh, you know, I get to the, I get to the Olympia and, you know, just, it's just a, a lot at once, you know, I guess everyone's kind of new there. You know, I was hoping for a bit of a better placing, uh, that year I got ninth, but, um, I was still happy, you know, top 10, it wasn't bad. You know, I didn't really, I really didn't feel, uh, you know, cheated or upset or anything. I was just really happy to kind of be there. A lot of people did say you were overlooked, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was this picture of me and, uh, I love Sadiq, man. Sadiq's cool, he's always nice to me. But it was a picture of me and Sadiq. Um, and honestly, I, you know, all due respect to him, he, like, I'm not, I'm not quite sure why he beat me that year, especially I'm not. considering he, he looked 10 times out. better than the next year. Yeah, yeah, that first year, man, was a little rough for him. But that's honestly, the next year, he looked 10 times better. You know, I give him credit for that, for improving. But um, I ended up beating him that year, so I don't really understand the, uh, the logic there with the placing. But, you know, it is what it is. So when you, when you obviously step on stage and you, you beat people that you've previously gone up against that, we've, you know, that were higher than you or p- placed higher than you, do you see that as sort of mile markers in your career? Do you picture somebody in your head and think, right, this year I'd like to beat um, Rion, next year I want to beat, do you know what I mean? Do you see it as little mile markers in your career or do you just, is it just, I want to win and that is it? <laughs> you know, I haven't like, it's weird, like, a lot of these guys, like, um, shoot, like, I don't know, like, uh, I get, like, cause, so, like, no, nah, I don't really consider that just because it hasn't really happened that way for the most part. Like, um, you know, like, the, from the first Olympia to the second Olympia, a lot of, granted, I did beat a lot of those guys, but 
a lot of those guys um, just kind of fell off. Like I was talking to somebody else the other day um, about how drastically the competition from 2016 to now has changed. Like that first year, that first year lineup, like compared to like the guys now, even to some of the same guys, like Breon's improved so much, like a lot, but like a lot of those guys that were in that 2016 Olympia haven't made it back to the Olympia since. They haven't won a show since, you know, that first year, just because, you know, shows back then only had maybe, you know, anywhere from like seven to 15 people in it. But now you got shows with 40. It's had one with 40 on like the Texas show or late last year. So um, the way I kind of look at like milestone wise is one that from my, if I'm improving, that's the biggest thing. Um, as long as I'm improving, that's a good sign, especially considering um, a lot of these guys aren't, especially because they're, 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 they're at the weight limit, they're at the cap. Yeah. Um, they're not really sure what to do. Um, but honestly, I think I'm like, just looking at a lot of people, I'm probably one that's been consistently improving the most. Granted, I had a lot of room for improvement, <laughs> but but um, that's, what, that's what I like to do. I like to kind of see how I'm doing um, myself. So obviously, if you've got room for improvement with your physique, let's just quickly touch on your posing routines. Now, I can hand on heart say, and I've got other classic physique guys lined up coming on for interviews, yours is hands down the greatest posing routines I've ever seen out of all of them. A hundred percent, I'll stand by that. What sort of got you into, I mean, to be honest, it wasn't even, when you were posing, I wasn't even picking up on any mandatories. I was just like, Oh wow, okay, and he's just done that, and I was, and it was like very Kai Green esque <laughs> movements, but just very fluid and nice, and the music, it was just, it was just really, it's like an absolutely awesome performance. I sort of forget I'm watching bodybuilding. It just seems like it's some sort of Cirque du Soleil sort of <laughs> risky. Yo, that's my dream, man. If I get on Cirque du Soleil, yo, that my, that's literally like I can retire happy. So, <laughs> so what? How how does this all come about? I, you know, I just one day kind of clicked and, you know, like if people, I have a couple of my order routines online and you can see kind of like, well, let me go back even further. So like, um, you know, from my first bodybuilding show, I had this coach and he's a great guy, John Blatt, and he was helping me with my routine. And, you know, honestly, he's kind of basic stuff like branch horn and you go, he's like, how about you, you, you know, you walk to that side of the stage and you get like a front door and you walk over there and hit a most muscular and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, uh, you know, and I, I went home and I, I got on YouTube and I looked at some routines to kind of kind of see what people did. And um, I saw Kai, I actually saw Kai Green. I was like, whoa, this is, you can do that on, you can do this on stage? I'm like, wow, all right. And, you know, I started doing like So yeah, Kai Green definitely was the first influence I had. And so, you know, um, if you see my first couple of routines, there's a lot more Kai Green-esque. And, but um, I would say it's, it, they were very entertaining, but they weren't very, refined and I think that uh and the for people always love the Toronto routine I think once I did that one I found a good balance between like of like entertainment plus like classical style of posing you know I kind of found a balance of like of both and kind of made it my own um thing and I think that really worked out really well the Britney Spears song the Toxic Remix that's my favorite everyone loves Toronto but Toxic is my favorite I literally came up with that one. I like I literally couldn't even practice. I practiced that one only um, like one day, like the day before, because I was like sick. I, I couldn't even get out of bed. Like I was cramping up. Like I I got on the plane and I get to the the show and I'm cramping up and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then um, I literally only practiced it. But it's literally the longest routine I ever did. It was three minutes long. But I literally only practiced it in my head up until like the day the night before. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I was just in the zone for that one. Yeah, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> what do you sort of yeah. picture? Do you just sort of go through it? Do you, do you like, yeah. cut off the crowd completely and just zone in on, on your craft? So what I did, so, like, I couldn't do that in the past. I couldn't even do that for the Toronto routine. Um, what helped me to do that was, like, once I started helping other people with posing, I'm, and at first, I, when I used to help people, I would get up and kind of just do stuff. And I'm like, okay, that feels good. That feels good. And I, I did that so much, I could start it. Eventually, I was able to kind of do it in my head. And then um, it just was, you know, repetition and practice, and I could kind of see it. So it was like I had to kind of build up on that to do that. Okay, okay. So moving on from that then, let's bring it full circle to 2020. What are your plans this year? What shows have you got in mind? 
whose ass are you going to kick? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you calling? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited, man. I'm excited, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm happy. You know, I took last year off for the most. I took a year, um, a year and like two months off, year and three months off, you know, from being on the stage. And like, yo, it's been great. Um, Niagara Falls was an awesome show. Um, I didn't plan on, on, I had to do that one in order to qualify for the Arnold. And I guess, the, and I, you know, I qualified for the Olympia too with that show. So um, definitely, you know, um, when I took that year off, me and my old coach, Matt uh, Porter, we had talked and he's like, yo, if you're going to take this year off, we need to come back and make a statement at a bigger show. Yeah. So um, we chose the Arnold and <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. You know, he, literally right after the Arnold, like last year, I was like, I want to do the Arnold. And that's what we did. And that's what was the game plan. And uh, so I'm doing the Arnold. I'm doing the Olympia. I would like to do a show right after the Arnold, but they don't have any. Um, the, the next one is like four or five weeks away and I'm like that's a weird like time gap and I didn't want to do it so yeah, uh, for them a few weeks. yeah it kind of sucks because I thought I could have swore I know they used to have like two shows right after but I guess they they moved them or something but um, this after that you know the Olympia and then um, I'm gonna do the rock show after that if I, I gotta figure out the rules that they have for that show but I'm pretty sure I can do it and um, literally, so I'm like, that's probably, <laughs> I'm, that's probably the, like, the most, is, I'm super excited for that show just because it's like, it's like, obviously this is like, he's the highest paid actor. He's going to put a lot of money into this show. It's going to be amazing. He's going to have all these like mainstream sponsors there. He already has Under Armour and, and Ford, you know, he's going to have, he has his own like production company. So the content coming from that show is going to be amazing. And I'm yeah. like, and not to mention, like, his ex-wife is a bodybuilder, so she's going to do it right. So imagine, like, someone who comp actually competes and still competes, who has millions of dollars to put on, the, like, their dream show. I'm like, that's going to be amazing, you know? Not only so, that, for you, if you if you take part, you're taking part in the first show ever of Athleticon. And that, that's yeah. something to, to always walk away with. Even if you didn't come away with, you know, any metal at all, you've still taken part in the, in the original show. It might exactly. fuck. I'm a joke, it won't. <laughs> you say, oh, what? <laughs> and then, yo, like, I, you know, if you think about it, like, it's a really, like, from a business a business uh, perspective, it's, it could be a very good opportunity just for the fact, like, like I said, like, you got mainstream people there that's not, that's never seen bodybuilding. That, does, like, or they only see bodybuilding as the open class, they've never seen classic. Yeah. Um, so there's that. And then also for the point of, like, like, um, fans and other people, because, like, but I've noticed, like, I never, I never would have thought this, but there's a lot of people who don't follow bodybuilding who really like my routines, and I'm like, all right, well, you know, I guess that's just an opportunity for me, opportunity for me to kind of reach more of those people. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really, and that's honestly like my dream with bodybuilding is to reach people outside of bodybuilding and show them what kind of, you know, what classic can be, what bodybuilding can be, what posing can be. So really excited. So obviously, you know, The Rock's got his new show and that's, that's good because obviously it's another source of revenue for bodybuilders on top of that. Um, it makes, you know, their year, their calendar fill up and they can pick, pretty much pick and choose any of the mainstream shows. Now, I don't know if you're aware, the Arnold Classic 2021 is coming to the UK for the first time next year. Would you yeah. be attending that? If they have Classic, man, like they, a lot of these shows don't have it. Like the Arnold Australia doesn't have it. Either, neither, you know, if they if they brought it there, I would do it because I like the. I've been to the UK. I was there um, for about you know seven days in 2018. I went. I was in London, Leeds, and Paul. You know. Oh, nice little tour. <laughs> <laughs> London's not yeah. bad. Where where else was it? Leeds and. In Paul, like a beach city. Paul, I think it's Paul. Oh, right. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually liked it. I like pool. Leeds was just there for work. I didn't really see much. But London was great, yeah. I love London. Did you understand anybody in Leeds? I didn't really talk yeah, to Google him. Trans Is that bad? <laughs> it's like, you're English and I can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> oh, man. No, I, I definitely... I was there with uh, this posing uh, coach, um, Emma. If you know her, Emma. Yeah, she's awesome. She brought me out there and we did some, some work together. Nice. But... Uh, yeah, I love London. I was, uh, I went to this little bit of like gym, this hole in the wall called Yorkie's Gym down in, uh, I want to say it's in like, I may be wrong, but Tooting, I think, maybe. 
I may be wrong, but um, the gym is called York. It's this little hole in the wall gym owned by like this this retired uh, female bodybuilder. It was awesome. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So I've just got uh, a few fan questions uh, from our shout out. I have um, gone through these and had to take out some dodgy ones. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised how many I get. Um, so somebody's asked advice on how to grow their quads, their, their quad sweep. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So that was, um, so basically, like I was, you know, I actually just did a video on this the other day. So, the, you know, <laughs> some, I'm, I'm going to try to make this concise and not make this a 10 minute answer. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Um, Go shoot. So let me see how that is. So like what, is, so I would say, um, is I know a lot, it's kind of, it's kind of tough not knowing what they already do, you know, yeah. but basically I would say, uh, just for quad sweep, I think, uh, hacks or front squats are great for biasing the quads. You know, people always talk about normal squats or bad squats being the best exercise, but for hacks are definitely one of the best exercises you can do for your quads. Um, and just making sure going, going, um, going to depth, going as low as you can. Like if you need to line up the weight a bit, you know, do that. Just make sure you're in that full range of motion going all the way down on that squat if you can. Um, if you don't have a hat squat, do the front squat, but also you get to put a little bit more on the quad, uh, elevate your heels. If you don't, I personally like the wedges. They make them prime mix wedges, but if you don't have that, just go old school. Couple of plates. Like, yeah, just use the plates. Yeah, totally fine. Um, that's a short answer for the, that's a good short answer for that. One, that's yeah. fine. That's perfect. Um, someone's asked, who's been your main rival coming through the shows? Shows. It's been, so um, in 2016, I would say it was damn Charles. I competed against him in almost every show I did that year. Literally every show I did that year, five shows. Um, he beat me more, he beat me more times than I beat him, unfortunately, that year. But uh, we did the prestige together. He placed second, I placed third. I beat him in Tampa. He kicked my ass at the Olympia. I think he got top five that year. Uh, which I thought was completely crazy because I beat him in Tampa and then literally, you know, a month later, he comes, he places way above me, you know. Uh, then we did, can, we did Kentucky Moss. No, he didn't do Kentucky. No, we did a Diana Cadu Classic and he beat me there again. He beat me and Chris Mumstead at that show. Um, then I, I took the year off and then, uh, no, I didn't take the year off, but I, I came back. Um, in 2017 and finally beat him again. And I think he kind of retired after that. Um, besides that, I don't really, I don't think I really have any like true rival, rivals just yet. Um, definitely, I think I'm going into the, the Arnold is definitely, uh, that's, people have been talking, they say uh, me, Steve and uh, Alex are the, the, the three favorites to win it. And um, yeah, it's funny because I, 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 you know, I'm friends with both of those guys. Um, and those guys are definitely, they're in Florida right now. They're in Miami. They're like three hours down the road from me right now. Training. <laughs> so, um, definitely excited to see them. And it's crazy because Steve took a year off too. So we'll see how he looks when he comes back. You know, um, Alex, of course, he's a big guy coming down from the 212. So, yeah. Have you got your music picked out already? Yeah, I do. I haven't finished the routine yet. People always ask me. I literally, uh, yeah, I got, I got the music picked out and the routine is like halfway done. Um, I've just been really, really busy uh, with with um, just work and everything. So, How does it feel when people keep asking you about your posing? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that positive reinforcement, though? I don't think it's positive reinforcement at all. <laughs> I don't think it's bad either. I just, I just know that's what I'm known for and people want to know. Um, you know, I just say, like, if, like I, half the time people – you know, if, after I did in Toronto, the, the routine I did after that, I was a little nerve-wracking just because – how good the response was for Toronto. I was kind of nervous on like, oh man, this is gonna suck, what people gonna think. But uh, you know, I just kind of got over that. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna do, keep doing what I like and keep doing what I do. And if you know people like it more, that's awesome. If not, then you know, they can just say they like Toronto. <laughs> the routine will be it, you know, it's cool, it's cool. Like everyone has their own preferences and, and, and their likes. So, you know, um, definitely. I mean, I mean, but I'm very excited for this routine. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I've been doing like the epic music, like the Toronto, like the Survivor, Toxic, and this last one, different Niagara Falls. I've been doing that that's, that style of music for like almost two years now. I'm like, well, I need to switch it up. So I'm not gonna do that for the on. I'm gonna do like an R&B song or something. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got yeah, yeah. I 
I was talking to my friend and uh, his name's Mike. And uh, we, I was like, man, I don't, you know, I, I had three song choices. I'm like, I'm really showing this one, but I know people like the epic music. And he's like, well, man, like, how about you show them like you're not a one trick pony and yeah. you can do other styles of music? And I'm like, well, that's true. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Casey and JoJo. Oh, no. Nah. Nah, it's, it's a new school. Like, I, you know, like, it's funny. Like, I was with Keon too, man. I was talking to Keon. And Keon was like, you should do like an old R&B song. I was like, dude, I don't want to do an old R&B song. Like, <laughs> Uh, I was like, oh my gosh, it's a it's a newer song. It's it's a newer song. Um, I just like I don't know, like even with the even with the the um, like I remember a while back, some dude was like, oh, he only dances when he poses, and that's why I did like the Survivor and stuff. And I was like, well, you know, I don't like super classical music, but like this epic music has elements from that. But it's also it's like a it's like classic. It's a blend of old school and new school. You put it together. You know, and that's what I like about, like, music I choose a lot of times. Awesome, brother. So one last question is, what show do you want to win the most in 2020? <laughs> I don't want to all of them. Question, really. <laughs> all of them. Nearly all the shows. Like, all these shows, like, are very huge shows. I don't want to lose any of these shows. <laughs> I don't get why someone's asked that. It's like, oh, I don't mind losing. I'll lose the Arnold. That's fine. <laughs> when the Olympics. Oh, are you going? <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, yeah. <laughs> that's a very, yeah, that's an odd question, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do, um, Terrence, obviously you've got a website, you've got your merch on there, um, Rough Nation, things like that. Um, I'm going to put the links to that in the description. Is there anything else that you want to check? Do you want any, say anything to your fans? Um, anything you want to plug? Oh, man. Um, well, if you guys want to follow this prep, you can check out the Hypertrophy app. Um, I got my own crowd, like what I'm eating, you know, progress photos from each week, why I'm changing certain things. Because I know a lot of times people don't get to see like a literally full list from, you know, top to bottom, beginning to end. I think that's really cool. Um, Where can they find the app? It's um, hypertrophycoach.com. You can find it in the bio on Instagram or type in hypertrophycoach.com. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then it's free for seven days. So if you want to be cheap and just, you know, Get all the information and then just cancel it. Go for Write it. Write it down yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Write it down quick and then and just. <laughs> it's, so yeah, yeah. It's really cool. It's um only ten bucks a month. Um, if you want to keep it, you know, it's up to them. Yeah. So what do they get with that? Just uh, is it like a, a profile of of your? It has a lot of info. So it's it's a collaboration between me and my um, uh, train my coach. He uh, does my program, my training, my workouts. Uh, Joe, if you guys don't know Joe Bennett. Um, he's worked with uh, he worked with Dallas McCarver with the train quite a bit. Uh, Flex Lewis, uh, Ben Pakowski. Um, let me see what else has he done. I think those are the top the top guys he's worked with. He's worked with a lot more, but those are the top guys I would say. And um, he's he's has a you know degree in this. He has been in the trenches. He's competed, and uh, he has a lot of stuff like to learn how to execute better your exercises, the training. If he also has sections about if you want to be a trainer, if you want to learn how to be, you know, he's been training for over 20 years. So if you want to learn how to increase your own training business, he's got a section for that. Oh, so um, first, you know, it's, it's ideal for personal trainers as well or, you know, gym instructors. Yeah, yeah, it's great information. I sent, like, I don't I don't really look in that section, but I sent one of my clients there and he said it's really, he bought it just because of that. And I was like, okay, well. So the knowledge behind the app, it's not just your standpoint from the front of bodybuilding. It's everything that your, you know, your partner's done behind <clears throat> the scenes with pros, with, you know. Yeah. Your, your and then they also, if they like Hunter Labrada, Hunter has a section on it too. He's one of the athletes too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you want like, literally it's weird because like, I, you know, I'm cool with Hunter, but literally his dad, Lee Labrada is like my favorite bodybuilder for posing. Really yeah. the best okay. yeah, ever. <laughs> And I try not to like fanboy out and be like, "Yo, how's your dad doing?" And like, "Can I meet your dad?" <laughs> Mate, <laughs> like, I was I like, like the other day, I had William Bodak on, and he's my all-time favorite bodybuilder. I'm like, "Hi, William." <laughs> <laughs> so bad, yeah. I'm trying not to, yeah, I try not to like use him for his dad. That'd be kind of weird, you know. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, it's, like I said, there's a lot of stuff you can guys can check out. Check out awesome. workouts. We'll put all the links yeah. in the description for you, Terrence. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Um, can we get you back on after the Arnold Classic when you've got the trophy? What are we saying? Yeah, man. Yo, I would, oh, my gosh. Yes, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Great. We'll get you on with whoever whoever's uh, Ashy beat as well. 
<laughs> you know, I like I like I like your attitude. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> okay, brother, thank you so much for coming out. It's been an absolute pleasure. All right, man. All right, peace.